And so I really found myself in this difficult situation where my health wasn't where I wanted it to be. And that's actually where I found the peptide therapy. It, it transformed my health. And then I got trained in it and started utilizing it in my practice. But that year that felt, I felt like a failure. And I, I thought, you know, going through my own health issues would disqualify me from being a, a great practitioner. But in fact, it was the opposite. It was that year of challenge and struggle and what felt like failure was actually what set me up to want to learn about business and, and running uh, efficient business and how to grow and scale and uh, really serve a lot of women and free up my time to, to really serve at the highest level. Welcome to the Anthropology Podcast. I'm your host, Megan Walker. As a former naturopathic doctor and anthropologist, I align the intersection of personal performance, purpose, and innovative thinking in badass women working to change the world as entrepreneurs and go-getters. Anthropology is the study and science of what makes an entrepreneur think, feel, and perform in a path compelled by a vision for helping others, solving problems, while building a life on your own terms. Together, we are exploring the health, mindset, and strategies that distinguish the world's best entrepreneurs. This is the Anthropology Podcast. Welcome to episode 241 of the Anthropology Podcast. I am obviously Dr. Megan Walker, super excited about our subject matter today, which is like Ugh, the ultimate manifestation of what anthropology is all about. Anthropology to me is, is the study of that intersection of mindset, health, and entrepreneurship. And my guest today really does hang out at that place. Dr. Amber Krogsgrud is a naturopathic doctor practicing in California. She's trained in regenerative medicine and something super cool called peptide therapy. Now, if you haven't heard of peptide therapy, well, then this episode is actually for you. We're going to talk biohacking, nootropics, which is really like how do we activate and turn on the on the brain. We're talking entrepreneurship and really how do we get women, high performing women, responding and activating physiologically so they can be the best possible possible blah blah blah. I need peptide therapy, best possible selves every single day. Dr. Amber is amazingly entertaining on both YouTube and her Instagram channel. You're absolutely going to love her. And I'm super excited to introduce you to her now. Dr. Amber Krogsgrud, welcome to the Anthropology Podcast. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Well, I'm really looking forward to this conversation because we're going to delve into something we've actually never talked about on the Anthropology Podcast. We're going to get into an arena of expertise that you deploy in your clinical practice, which is around something called peptides. But before we do that, I'd love for you to set the stage with my audience, share with people who you are, what you do, how you got into naturopathic medicine, and then we're going to talk all things regenerative health and performance. Awesome. Yeah. So... Gosh, I, I'll just go back to the story of how I got into medicine. And that was growing up in the Midwest, in uh, America, in Minnesota. And I grew up on a standard American diet, I had health issues as a kid, didn't really have any resolve other than prescription medications for eczema, uh, is really what I had as a kid. And there wasn't really access to uh, functional or holistic practitioners at that time. And I remember growing up and getting super curious about my diet and seeing how that changed, how I felt and, and how my workouts were. And the really uh, formative experience for me was in college. I had tutored at uh, several universities and I just saw this really profound connection between uh, nutrition and cognition. So how is our brain function being affected by what we're putting in our body? And that really captivated my attention. I thought this, I, I would love to spend the rest of my life helping people with improving how they feel and their health so they don't end up in these um, dark health stories where their, their health kind of starts falling apart. And so, uh, so yeah, that really propelled me to uh, go pre-med. I was uh, on the route to become a conventional practitioner, found out about naturopathic medicine and the principles just resonated with me. And what I really witnessed 
in my job shadowing of uh, a lot of conventional practitioners when I was pursuing that journey is I just saw that people were not, uh, there's a lot of um, a pill for every ill, somebody coming in for a really quick appointment and then being sent out on a sixth or seventh medication when they're already on multiple. I'm not really seeing this uh, regeneration that I wanted to really help people with. And so then when I found naturopathic medicine, heard about it on a podcast actually uh, out of San Diego and I was in my final year pre-med, applied, got, got accepted, went through the, the training, uh, and I had the opportunity to work in clinics in Seattle, so I did most of my training in Seattle, and then in San Diego, and then in clinics in Los Angeles. So I've really seen the full spectrum. I've worked in homeless camps. I've worked in Hollywood uh, with a lot of more high-end clients, and so it's been such an experience uh, really working with so many different types of people. And now what I really focus on is women's health and uh, utilizing some of these therapies to help women in their busy daily lives. We have so much on our plate. And so we need to have a wellness plan or a strategies to support us. Amazing. Okay. So talk to me a little bit about, I know you're a busy woman and we're going to talk a little bit about your business and your business journey. Cause I I'm always fascinated by that piece. But talk to me about these busy women that you are working with. I would think across the entire spectrum of who you have the opportunity to encounter, you're seeing some common elements in terms of the manifestation of the busyness in their life. What are you finding are some of the unifying things that are manifesting for them? Yeah, I think the real common thread is uh, we can find ourselves in this place where we're really uh, burning the candles from both ends where we're not sleeping. We're trying to get it all done. Maybe moms who have kids, they're running a business. uh, They're trying to write a book. They're trying to create their online course and run all of their admin team. And and I feel all of that personally myself. And so I feel like I can relate to that, but that, that constant cortisol production, that uh, hamster wheel of, of stress being produced. We can just know all the downstream effects of of cortisol on the sex hormones on thyroid hormone and so supporting women and helping them i think so much of it it is helping them to understand what's happening in their body and and how they can support themselves support their hormones there's really no other place where women can learn how to or why to do certain things to set themselves up to win in their hormone health regulating uh, estrogen levels, avoiding plastics in our environment, supporting progesterone levels with certain food supplements, uh, testosterone levels, again, with certain food supplements. And then what are all of the environmental exposures? A lot of medications, birth control that can throw our hormones off balance. And so much of our, our mood and our uh, our mindset, how we feel on a daily basis is run by hormones. And right. so we're running a business, we want that to be working for us. We want those those hormones to be uh, setting us up to win physiologically. There's the psychology, I always talk about how, you know, there's the environment, the circumstances, and, and we can have traumas or we can have, you know, stressful things happen to us. But then there's our body, How's, what's our physiology? And that's really what, as naturopathic doctors, we come in and, and help people figure out what's happening in their body and the signaling that's happening. So when we talk about this piece and you mentioned estrogen a little bit, is, is this for you like the cornerstone component? Cortisol is going to come and go. We're going to have stress that comes and goes. If mm-hmm. estrogen is balanced, do you find that cortisol is less of an issue for women? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uh, women who will fall into this estrogen dominance picture. But yeah, when, when estrogen is in check, uh, the, the, te- the trend that I tend to see is that the cortisol can impact the, the estrogen levels over time. Uh, but yeah, when women have, uh, we're all going to have stress. We're all going to, you know, go through periods. I agree with you on that. And uh, yeah, when we're able to really keep our estrogen in check, that's going to support all the other hormones, right? This, there's these ratios and these relationships with estrogen and progesterone and, and the severity of our menstrual cycles and how we feel and our mood. And, and so yeah, it, it's, they're all in concert. They all kind of in, impact each other, but 
estrogen is a huge player in how a woman feels. A hundred percent. And, you know, I think when we talk about stress, I find our natural inclination is we all kind of jump on this bandwagon of like all the stuff we have to do and the kids we have to manage and the work we have to do. And, you know, that is stress. And I think sometimes we forget that there is also this physiological stress that we're just managing behind the scenes. It's invisible. It's, it's what's happening with respect to blood sugar. It's what's happening with respect to the off gassing from your new renovation from the, you know, the, the news and media that hangs out in the background or your Wi-Fi. there's this invisible sources of stress. And I'd love your perspective on, on how you manage and triage that element of a woman's life? How do you clear out all of this, you know, unnecessary uh, baggage and weight that's putting all of this additional physiological stress on the body? Yeah, I love this quote uh, that really answers that question. And it, and it talks about don't major on the minors. And so the things that are most pivotal in our health, we want to focus on on the big players, which um, I think for a lot of women is sleep. We know that sleep impacts really everything. Uh, activity, you know, sitting really impacts us negatively. Sitting's like the new smoking. Um, and then also the, the other thing that I've been really cognizant is, is EMF. Some of those exposures, yeah. minor things that we can do to avoid exposure. And I have little EMF, <laughs> um, a blocker and I've been used, I've been actually wearing some of the there's a hat and a shirt that can block up to 99% uh, of the EMS. So what are these really passive strategies? Things that we just, we set them and forget them. <laughs> right. And they're protecting us. Things like red light therapy, very passive. Um, my water filter, very passive. Once it's set up, it's done. I don't think about it every day. I just drink the water from it. And so some of those things can be really easy to incorporate. Uh, but I think focusing on some of those, those major elements, uh, sleep, hydration, movement, and then the, the mind, mind-body connection, meditation, uh, some sort of practice where we can bring that body back down into parasympathetic. That could be Epsom salt baths or massage, something to relax the nervous system. I love this idea of setting it and forgetting it. And you can't, you can't see, like, for those of you who are listening, we can see each other right now, but just off camera to my right is my uh, full length wall red light therapy. So I can come down here to this quiet room. I'm in my podcast studio. It's all soundproofed in here and I can turn on a meditation and stand in front of my red light. And, and the cool thing about that is one, I'm alone, which is massively therapeutic when you have three kids. And two, I can stack my red light and my meditation at the same time. And I have just found the more I can get into a routine, the more these things just are like naturally part of your day, that's when you're benefiting from their incremental impact. Because if I stood in front of that red light twice a year, it would have zero influence on my, on my health. I love this idea of set and forget. And, you know, I would just really encourage everyone as you're listening to this, what, like make a list of 10 things you can set right now and just forget, just build them into your day, but they move you 1% closer to uh, health. I really love that. It's it's the kind of thing you hear from seasoned practitioners is you don't get nuanced on the tiny details. Mm -hmm. um, you save that. You save that for another time. So I do want to get nuanced though on something tiny, like literally something tiny. And I know one of the arenas of expertise that you bring to the table in your practice is you you leverage a therapeutic intervention um, called peptides. Can you just explain to people when when they hear about peptides or they hear that a practitioner is leveraging them in their practice, what the heck they're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a word that's thrown out on a lot of podcasts. A lot of people talk about how they're using peptides or peptide therapy and uh, maybe confusion as to what that is. And I think what most people think about when they hear that word is probably the collagen peptide supplement that's in their cabinet in their kitchen. And so it's a, it's a similar idea, but essentially what a peptide does in the body, it's a signaling molecule, kind of like a hormone, right? Hormones will signal certain uh, pathways in the body and peptides do the same. In women's health, we've really focused on, uh, when we talk about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, we focus on replacing these hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, but we don't really focus on all these other signaling molecules that decrease with age, with chronic stress, with trauma, with injury, uh, medication use, huge piece as well. So uh, what 
peptide therapy can really do is support the normal signaling of some of these pathways that also will fall off as we age, as we're injured, as we have, um, you know, more stressors on the body. And what that can look like is supporting gut health, uh, administering peptides that can help with the mucosal lining when there's leaky gut, when there's acid reflux. A lot of times in, in some of these more chronic gut issues, we can actually see decreased levels of these pep signaling peptides. One of them is called BPC-157. It really helps to protect gut lining. And we know that oftentimes women who are under a lot of stress um, potentially dietary causes like gluten can cause this intestinal permeability, which can lead to uh, really be stage one, setting the stage for autoimmunity and brain fog and a lot of symptoms that, that follow that. And so the goal is really to restore signaling. And the word that I like to call it is cellular medicine, helping the cell to function better. That's really the essence of peptide therapy. And what does it look like for people to take it? Are they, is it a supplemental piece? Can it be administered in IVs? Like what is the experience of, of having peptide therapy? Yeah, different forms. There are different forms. So there are some capsules that they're uh, essentially a supplement in the United States where you can purchase them over the counter. Anybody can have access to them. Uh, I there are some contraindications, things to know, times to take them, but they are a supplement, over-the-counter supplement. Then there are injectable forms, which tend to have uh, somewhat of a better effect because we're bypassing that gut. <laughs> we're getting it right into the body and the bloodstream. It's usually the smartest way to go. Yeah, especially in, in chronic illness. A lot of women who are just have a lot of uh, gut inflammation or absorption there. So the injectable forms... There are also intranasal forms, which I love. And this is what I, I use with a lot of my women because it's really fast. It takes, you know, 10 seconds. Uh, some of them have the nootropic benefits. Some of them can help with anxiety. So there's the intranasal forms. Some of them can really protect against neuroinflammation that we know is happening with mold exposure, uh, with head trauma. And there's also topical forms that I'll use more in uh, psoriasis, eczema, any sort of skin issues, acne that can be really phenomenal at calming down that inflammatory signaling. That's what a lot of these do. They just kind of up that inflammation that's happening that's driving many of the, the chronic illness that's happening. So uh, those are the, the main ones, the topical, the intranasal, the injectable, and the capsule. There are some that also come as patches, like the NA, there's NAD patches. There's, that's another format where if you just slap the solution on your skin, it will not absorb, but we've created a patch that will help it absorb into the skin. So there's multiple different ways. It just depends on the peptide and what you're looking to address. So let's talk about some of the examples that I know you, you see a fair bit with women. And I want to talk full spectrum, right, from like where we're working with women who are challenged to like an optimal state. Cause you mentioned this nootropic piece, which I'm really actually interested in when we're talking about brain function. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's just say we were working with someone who's really in that, in that, in a state of anxiety in a state of, of overwhelm, which I think is sort of a pervasive global sentiment right now for, well, for some obvious, obvious yeah. reasons, mm -hmm. how would you deploy peptides in that, in that scenario? Is that your sole course of, of treatment? Are there specific things you're looking at? Are you looking at genetic pathways at the same time? Like what does it look like from a, from a global perspective for you? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point is this is not a standalone. Uh, many of the times there are times when women will come to me and they've, they've really seen many other practitioners and this is one thing that they have not brought on board as a part of their plan. And so it's more focused on this therapy, but why no. is that? Like, why is it something? Because I don't find it's that it's like it's a common frontline choice for practitioners. Yeah, there's I think a couple of reasons. There's just recently been training uh, out training practitioners on how to use these. What are the right. indications, contraindications? A4M had a training right. course certification that I went through. These peptides have been used 
since the 1970s, 80s, there's a lot of research in Russia. Russia was way ahead of their time with their athletes helping recovery, performance, brain function, uh, regenerating tissues. And so that's really where the, many of these therapies came from. They just have not been used in a, in a medical setting. There hasn't been training. There hasn't been access until more recently. Yeah. Okay. I, I totally moved us off of this, like this fictitious woman who's got anxiety and overwhelm and just <laughs> pulling it in. I just want to give context mm-hmm. before we moved into that, into that piece. So, so let's talk about her. Let's talk about what that assessment would look like and how that would fit into the context of all of her, all of her therapy and support. Yeah. So what I really like to do is start with hormone assessment. So with anxiety, we know there's so many root causes from uh, low progesterone, uh, higher level of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone imbalances, uh, as well as thyroid. You could have thyroid hormone being high, that hyperthyroid causing a lot of anxiety. So we have to really start with what's happening there. Um, Was there some trauma that happened? Does she have a stealth infection? Something like mold in her home, which is very ominous and and quite common, in fact. other things like Lyme disease, uh, food sensitivities, <laughs> things that could be, you know, spiking Root that response. cause. Yeah. Yeah. So there's really a, a full workup. I like to run an oat panel to look at the mitochondria to see what's happening, that organic acid test uh, to get a really full profile. I love the Dutch test. So really looking at cortisol levels and this getting so many pieces to the puzzle. I think as a practitioner, we ha- we're looking at all these pieces. What are the symptoms? What are the labs? What's happening with cortisol? What's happening with all these sex hormones, thyroid hormone? And so those are all big uh, pieces that we look at and, and address. If uh, we see changes in hormones, we're I'm definitely you know looking at that first. Uh, and then really bringing on board some of these therapies that, like peptide therapies, that can be adjunct that can be supportive, right. that can be in in the moment when I'm feeling stressed and anxious, I can use this as a tool uh, to help calm me back down. And there's lots of things in the toolkit that can be used, right? There's CBD, there's all sorts of things that, that can really bring down or support uh, lowering of anxiety levels where some of the peptide therapies can come on board uh, is some of these intranasal forms, so very specific for the brain and helping to calm down anxiety. And uh, one of them that I like to use, I actually used it this morning, right before we jumped on, it's called Selenc. Uh, and Selenc is an intranasal peptide, and it really quelches this uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine called IL-6. So it, it lowers the inflammation that can drive up anxiety and maybe cause some mood changes in the brain. And so uh, this one can be used in not only in anxiety, but depression, PTSD, um, some of these, uh, you know, neurological where we're just really fighting and we don't want to have to be on uh, benzodiazepines or medication long term. And so there are the real uh, pieces, there are other options in natural medicine to help manage the anxiety and address what's going on beneath the surface. Amazing. And, you know, just to round out this conversation, because I love introducing people to new options, because I think more than anything, it gives them hope. It gives them opportunities to try different, uh, different pieces. What does the trajectory of care look like when someone starts to use peptides? Do you use them for a short period of time? Are you on them forever? Do you switch to someone else like or something else? Like, wh- What does that look like for people? Yeah, yeah. Many of these are, are not a long-term everyday solution like you would take uh, a thyroid medication. And if you miss your dose, you know, you may feel off. It's not really, the peptides are not so uh, specific that they have to be taken every day. In fact... I would liken them to nootropics. So what I do with my nootropics is I I have a stack of them and I'll cycle them in and out because I want my body to stay receptive to these nootropics. So peptides are very much the same way where uh, we don't want to initially use them every day, all the time. Our body can adapt. And because these are uh, natural, essentially they're working on improving pathways that our body already knows or already works on, 
they're very uh, bioidentical. And so there's a, a lower side effect profile than many medications because it's something that our body recognizes, uses. It, it, it's very uh, inherent to the way that our body functions. So that's one of the huge pros. But uh, yeah, they definitely not something that you want to be on uh, every day, all year round. I would be remiss if I didn't take this chance to like look at how you as an entrepreneur and a busy entrepreneur doing all sorts of cool things also support your system. Like what does, and I want to get into what your business looks like in a second, but like, how do you support yourself? What, what are some of the things that you do, not necessarily from an interventional perspective, but from like, you know, your daily stacking of things that help to support you stay at your prime? Yeah. So I'll, I'll walk you through a couple things that I do. I do have a red light that I use in the mornings, especially when it's cloudy. I'm in Los Angeles, California. So there are kind of overcast mornings. So I'll have my red light. I'll drink my uh, coffee with MCT oil. I'll mix that up in a blender. And uh, I usually, I like the Quintin uh, rehydration for many it's really helped me, and I find that a lot of women, it helps them as well to have some form of electrolytes or uh, rehydration because just drinking straight water oftentimes doesn't absorb well into the, the cells. We end up just kind of peeing it out. So, so yeah, I like to have some sort of electrolyte, the Quintin, uh, the little ampules that you just pop open. They're in glass, and I drink those in the morning for rehydration. I do love to – I have a – patio. So I'll sit out there. I'll read for about 15, 20 minutes. I like to do the, the 20, 20, 20, which is 20 minutes of reading, uh, 20 minutes of meditation. And I'll usually do Tony Robbins. It's on YouTube. It's just a, a 15 minute gratitude exercise, the, the way that he starts his morning. And then I'll usually go for a 20 minute walk. I'm right on the ocean. So I'll, I'll just go take in the fresh air and put my feet on the ground in the grass or the sand. Uh, and it's an amazing way to start the morning to refuel. And what's been really uh, an exercise for me lately is to not check my phone. That's the, the constant struggle for everybody who runs a business and has clients. The easy thing to do is wake up and turn that phone right up and, and check all of the messages that I missed overnight or the emails. And so having that hour of power, that, that time in the morning is really, really important. And then throughout the day, I'm also scheduling out breaks. So I have a lot of margin. Whenever I have appointments, I always book off, you know, 15, 20 minutes after before I can book another appointment that gives me time to go outside, take a breath of fresh air, hydrate, um, you know, give myself something that I need to, to show up as the highest version of me for, for everybody, uh, whether it be clients or meetings, whatever I have going on. So those are a couple of things. And then at night, uh, I don't, I really don't like, I don't watch TV <laughs> and I haven't in years. I think medical school, I just never had time for it. And so I never made the, the habit of it. And so I usually will go for a walk, do something outside on the ocean um, and then make dinner, uh, relax, maybe read a book. Sometimes I watch comedy, just something to kind of bring my, my spirit back down and, and fall asleep. And I also think it's really powerful. What we put in our mind right before we go to bed is really what yeah. is uh, stewing in our subconscious and in our dreaming all night. And so that time before bed, I, I, you know, can't put anything negative or scary or, uh, that would really impact my brain and my sleep that night. I think that is so, so critical. I recently, I don't watch a ton of TV, but I recently like knowledge that TV is the one thing that throws everything else off for a 24 hour period. It changes how I sleep. And then when I sleep poorly, I may or may not exercise. And if I may or may not exercise and I don't make the same choices with food. And then I'm more inclined if I'm going out to have a glass of wine, like it is, it is literally the one thing that if we remove it, everything else falls into um, into play. It's so interesting mm -hmm. how it's not always the things you think that you need to, uh, need to address. Yeah. T tell us all a little bit about your business and the journey to where you've gotten right now. You've had all sorts of different, um, exposures and experiences. Um, but you're up to some pretty cool things. Take us through that journey. Yeah. 
So my first year, I would say the hardest year of my life was probably the first year after I graduated. It was the reality that I had no idea that was about to hit. I uh, graduated, you know, had all this confidence, so excited to go into the world, use all of my skill set, uh, started a, a clinic with one of my fellow colleagues in San Diego, had, you know, this period of struggle of trying to get it up and going and, you know, went into debt and just didn't know what I was doing, didn't have the business training, had maybe one or two classes of, of business training in med school that had not adequately prepared me for the challenge ahead. And so, yeah, it was such a difficult year. I was, I was, uh, I took really good care of my health in med school. And when I graduated, I still, I entered med school really healthy. When I graduated, I felt like I was in this place of um, I had gut issues. I had candida overgrowth from just eating on the go and low stomach acid and all of these things. And so I really found myself in this difficult situation where my health wasn't where I wanted it to be. And that's actually where I found the peptide therapy. It, it transformed my health. And then I got trained in it and started utilizing it in my practice. But that year that felt, I felt like a failure. And I, I thought, you know, going through my own health issues would disqualify me from being a, a great practitioner. But in fact, it was the opposite. It was that year of challenge and struggle. And what felt like failure was actually what set me up to want to learn about business and, and running uh, efficient business and how to grow and scale and uh, really serve a lot of women and free up my time to, to really serve at the highest level. And also in my house too, it was that, that journey that made me understand when I see women that are fatigued and they're going through brain fog, I know what it's like to feel that. And so uh, it really didn't disqualify me, it qualified me for, for everything that I'm doing now. And I have a health coach on board. Uh, we have online programs. I've done a bunch of online summits, uh, speaking on those, building my email list and doing a lot of uh, video recording, uh, growing YouTube and just putting a lot of content out there about the peptide therapies and women's health. And yeah, it's it's been quite the journey uh, from that point on. But being, I think being an entrepreneur and being a woman going through those challenges is what makes you uh, qualified, but also builds you up to be a better uh, business owner and, and a better leader. Right. So that was, the, that was the big uh, journey for me <laughs> to where I, I am. I really love that. And that context I think is so critical. Sometimes the things we think are, are going to be our, our biggest failures are the things that, that actually make us so human to our, to our audience. And we underestimate it when we're in the weeds on that piece. Mm -hmm. Dr. Amber, I feel like this is the perfect place to transition our conversation. So I have a component of every interview. I call them our KPIs or key performance indicators, just like we have them in our business. We have them in how we live our lives as well. So I've got four key questions for you. And the first one is, is there a book or idea that has profoundly affected your fit, your thinking in 2021? Ooh, I have a bunch of books I'm, I'm uh, looking at that have been helpful. And I do a lot of audio books right now. Um, you know, I think the more I study medicine, the more I am understanding and drawn to understanding and helping clients with that mind-body connection and the power of our thoughts uh, creating our, our physical health and how that can manifest in, in the cellular health. And so... Joe Dispenza, he has this book called Becoming Supernatural, and he talks about those automatic unconscious thoughts and how we really create. Most people only know how to create their future based on their past because that's all they know is their past. And so that's been a huge pivotal piece for me. The more I learn and study in my own personal growth, I think the the block is usually in the mind. <laughs> it's usually in those programs, the way that we think about ourselves, the way we think about our business, the way we think about our health and, and changing those and going in and rewriting that uh, hardware is so, so, so powerful for, for my own journey. And I think for many of the women that I work with is we just feel stuck because we have these certain beliefs. And so 
that book was really powerful. Uh, the other one that I have on my phone that I read whenever I'm in a, a moment where I have to sit and wait, it's called uh, A Happy Pocket of Money. And so heard, good. So good. And it really isn't all about money. I think people are a little turned off by the title. Uh, but it really is about mindset and understanding the abundance in the world and how that everything that our experience is, is created by our mind. And it's, that's just such a powerful book. Even to read it for two minutes just changes me. <laughs> it's, it's like at the top of my shelf at all mm-hmm. times. It's on, it's not on audible cause it is, I can't find it in an audible format, but like that book is, it's amazing. What's your favorite health hack? Ooh, I mean, I have so many that I definitely utilize a lot of the peptide therapies to help me uh, with brain function and energy and deep sleep. Uh, But I would say recently, what I've been really learning about and incorporating more in my personal life is avoiding EMF exposure in as much as possible. And I, uh, I did live in a house with mold. And we know that Mold can be mold spores can grow 600 times faster when in the presence of high EMF and radiation, and so that's such a huge player uh, that none of us, most people, don't view as a problem because we can't see it and there's no sense of it in our daily life. But uh, yeah, I, I went on a trip to Dubai, came back, and 5G was was here, and. I started uh, noticing needing more sleep and and some you know, fatigue, um, that was different. So what are some things that I can do to protect myself? I have this gear, a baseball hat and a shirt that I sleep in every night and it protects against EMF 99.9%, uh, blocking of, of EMF, turning off all my devices, putting my computer on airplane mode. Um, my printer has Wi-Fi, So making sure that's off in my house, turning off the Wi-Fi avoiding uh, having my phone in my pocket and, you know, in my armband right next to all of my vital organs. So reducing some of those exposures has been, I think we don't see it, but it is really helping our cellular health because we're just human batteries and it impacts the, the production of energy in her mitochondria. I love that. How would you define your life's purpose? Ooh. These are really quick, simple yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I think, you know, the reason that I really love and, and pursued this journey of being a naturopathic doctor is because we love to help people transform their health. And we love to educate about all of these principles. Uh, and for me, I think there's this personal responsibility to become the most vibrant version of myself, the healthiest version of myself, and then teach other people to do the same. Amazing. And last question for you, entrepreneurship. Are we born this way or do we learn to become entrepreneurs? Oh, uh, you know, I, I think when I look at my own journey, I definitely learned it, but I think that people can be born with it too. Maybe there's a we can have a genetic predisposition to being really curious or gregarious or inventive. I don't think I have this uh, necessarily super inventive gene or, or predisposition, but I think we can cultivate it too. So both and both and. Both and we'll totally take it. Dr. Amber, you're up to so many amazing things in the world. Where can we send people to watch along as you embark on this journey? Yeah. So a couple of places they can connect with me on Instagram, which is Dr. D-O-C-T-U-R, Amber, N-D. My website is the same, Dr. Amber, N-D, uh, dot com. And then they can also find me on YouTube. There's a lot of content on peptide therapy and women's health and interviews that I've done in the past. So that's a great place to just go uh, watch some information about more about the peptide therapies and things that I use in practice. So, and that's the peptide doc on YouTube. Just search for that. Amazing. We'll hook everyone up in our show notes. You can find those at meganwalker.com forward slash podcast, and you can follow along with Amber and everything that she is up to. Dr. Amber, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.
One of the things I'm just so passionate about in all of the work that I do is helping people access the myriad of options that are available within the realm of natural health. I alluded to this in my interview with Dr. Amber, but it's really around this idea of giving people hope that there are so many evidence-informed options with respect to addressing the root cause of what is ailing people with respect to their health. I, you know, there's a time and place for taking that pill, but now more than ever, people are really wanting to stop and understand what is at the root cause of risk? What is at the root cause of the symptoms or illness that is manifesting and affecting their lives? And so I'm, I'm super excited about having guests like Dr. Amber about exposing people to therapeutic interventions like peptide therapy and really talking about how we can integrate these types of ideas into our everyday lives. The podcast and talking about business and mindset and entrepreneurship isn't just about my own mission about getting these pieces out. It's really about amplifying your own. We can reach more people when you help spread the word. And so my ask for you today, if you've been enjoying the Anthropology Podcast, if you find value in it, I would love for you to head over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a review, a five-star review if you are so inclined, and to share your thoughts on the podcast. The more people who share the work that we are doing, the more people we can reach, the more women of impact we can create in this world. And honestly, the world needs us now more than ever. You can catch all all of the episodes of the Anthropology Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to quickly search past episodes, you can head on over to meganwalker.com forward slash podcast, where you can search all of the different episodes, all 241 of them that I have been up to over the last few years. As always, I am Dr. Megan. I'll be with you again next week, and I'm wishing you an impactful week ahead. 